Hello there, you gorgeous stunning person. This is Chris from Techspert, and I'm here with a fresh new Honor 20 Pro handset here on the left. The most premium Honor handset you can buy in 2019. And that is, of course, a mantle previously held by the Honor View 20, which is here on the right, which was launched back at the start of 2019. So the big question is, what is the difference between the two? How does the Honor 20 Pro improve on the Honor View 20? And is it worth the cash? Well, let's do a full side-by-side -side comparison. And of course, for more on the latest and greatest tech, don't forget to pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now if I hadn't already told you that the Honor 20 Pro was this bad boy here on the left, you might be struggling to tell the difference between the two because of course they are basically identical here from the front. They've got a nice full view display which stretches pretty much edge to edge. Very little bezel action indeed. I believe both of them are around sort of 91% screen to front ratio and of course you don't have any notch action up top. What you get instead is this little dinky pinhole camera up in the top left corner. The Honor 20 Pro is actually slightly smaller than the Honor View 20. It's a 6.26 inch device compared with a 6.4 inch on a View 20, but obviously, as you can see, there's not much in it at all. Both of them are definitely a bit of a handful, although certainly not as sizable as some handsets that have come out recently, such as the likes of the OnePlus 7 Pro, for instance. But the good news is that, like most Honor handsets, you do at least get a dedicated one-handed mode, which really, really does help out. So you don't have to stretch all the way up to the very top of the uh, phone in order to reach that notifications bar and all of your apps and everything will work in this mode as well. Huzzah! But of course, while these phones look pretty much identical from the front, once you flip them over, you'll start to notice a couple of little differences. Differences. Both of these handsets are constructed from glass. They've got this lovely shiny sheeny finish. Uh, of course they do attract fingerprint grease and scuffs and stuff but thankfully certainly in these darker models they do help to uh, to mask this smudgy greasiness quite nicely. Of course my favourite of the two is still the Honor View 20 thanks to its funky V pattern light effect which as you can see there just shines on that back end whenever it catches the light just so it's a very cool effect. As here on the Honor 20 Pro it's a bit more of a sort of a sinister carnival mirror effect. If you stare at it long enough it's almost like you're peering deep into your dark twisted soul. It's a rear mounted fingerprint sensor here on the Honor View 20 as you can see there. It just falls naturally under your finger when you pick up the smartphone so if you just hibernate it all you need to do is just tap your finger to that surface and you're straight into your desktops nice and quick and nippy. It's actually very interesting it's an edge mounted fingerprint sensor here on the Honor 20 Pro something we've only seen in 2019 certainly on the Galaxy S10e it used to be a Sony Xperia staple but again it's nice and nippy just a quick tap of your digit against it and boom you're straight into your desktops nice and easy and it does actually double as the power button as well so if you just depress it that will hibernate the smartphone. Touch wood, both these smartphones are pretty durable as well. I've obviously had the Honor View 20 for a good few months. It's been banged about in bags and all sorts. And then it's got a couple of teeny little scratches here on the back, but honestly, nothing particularly bad at all. Uh, the Honor 20 Pro I've obviously had for a lot less time, almost two weeks now uh, at the time of filming this video. And again, touch wood, no nicks at all on that rear surfacing, uh, despite the fact it's been shoved in pockets with other smartphones and generally abused. Uh, and also around front, you do get a screen protector on both of these smartphones as well well just to help protect that display from any scratches and other nasty bits. As for the rest of the design the most notable difference between them is the fact that you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack here on the older Honor View 20 that has been completely culled from the 20 Pro so you will have to use a dongly thing bleh, or uh, of course Bluetooth headphones. And yes neither of these phones are properly water resistant so you definitely won't want to be taking them in the bath or the shower or anything like that. Uh, it'll be absolutely fine if it had uh, you know, a bit of rain or something like that but that's about the limit. So let's move on to that screen tech. As I mentioned before a uh, slightly bigger screen here on the View 20. It's a 6.4 inch compared to a 6.26 inch. They're both LCD panels and they do support a full HD plus resolution which you can uh, set as the permanent resolution otherwise the smart resolution will dial it down whenever you don't need images is quite that crisp and of course as usual you can play around with the uh, the color temperature and everything they both start off in vivid mode by default but you can actually play around manually with the color temperature and everything as well and I don't know if you can notice just from these menus but it is an ever so slightly warmer display here on the Honor 20 Pro compared with the View 20 of course that is just in the default settings you can just dial it down a little bit uh, make it a little bit cooler if that's what you'd prefer as warmer temperatures are a little bit more obvious when you actually load up the same image side by side on both of these smartphones but as you can see you get nice punchy colors uh, on on both of these handsets on that default vivid setting there so that you know you likes your greens your purples your reds all that stuff really stands out looks very very nice indeed not quite as 
bright or as uh, a sharp a contrast as you would get from an OLED panel, but still pretty solid overall as well. And of course, sadly, you don't get any HDR support from either of these handsets either. As for the speakers, well, unfortunately, it's just a mono output from both of these handsets. The uh, top earpiece speaker is not used for media at all. It's just the downward firing uh, bottom speaker instead. So we should give them a quick test out now. The output is basically the same. The big difference is between these two handsets. And please, for more on the latest and greatest tech, do poke that subscribe button and ding that notifications bell. Yep, good advice there. And uh, let's just try it here on the View 20. The big difference is between these two handsets. And please, for more on the latest and greatest tech, do poke that subscribe button and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So, um, so as you can see, not a massive amount of difference in terms of the general sort of the quality, the volume, all that. That was on top volume on both of them. As you can see, it's absolutely fine for just watching a bit of YouTube, something like that. It's not the most powerful output in the world. And of course, because it's firing away from your face, it sounds a little bit muffled as well. But you know what? Absolutely fine just for a bit of video or whatever. And as usual, you can have a good old play around with the audio settings when you've got a pair of headphones connected, get a bit of 3D audio on the go. And here on the Honor 20 Pro, you apparently get support for virtual 9.1 surround sound with some headphones as well. Uh, certainly uh, the audio quality is perfectly fine through headphones. Only issue I've noticed is with the Bluetooth connectivity occasionally if you hibernate the phone while you're listening to some music or something you'll have a little bit of a crackle or something but apart from that absolutely fine performance. While we're on the subject of some of these uh, software features because both of these smartphones are rocking the latest version of Android, Android Pie and you do have Honor's Magic UI slapped on top of there as well which is basically Huawei's Emotion UI by a different name. There's very, very little difference indeed. The Honor 20 Pro is currently on the most uh, up-to-date version 9.1, version 9.0.1 here on the older Honor View 20. Still no update to the latest version there. Hopefully that'll come soon with the Honor 20 Pro's official launch. Pretty much all of the features on there are basically identical anyway. You've got the likes of the uh, gesture navigation if you want to do a bit of that instead. You've got plenty of other gesture control and everything as well. I already showed you the one-handed mode. Uh, if you dive in here, you've got the likes of the flip to mute the smartphone. Uh, you can call up the split screen mode just by dragging your knuckle across the phone like so. You've got the likes of the digital balance feature which is basically just like a digital nanny. Oh my god, you're wasting your life. And you do get a bit of 2D facial recognition with both these handsets using that selfie camera as well. So all you need to do is just tap the power button and basically you're straight into your desktops once again. No pause or anything. Great stuff. And it tends to work pretty well even in low light conditions as well. Just make sure you're not wearing any sunglasses because that will definitely stump it. So as you can see they're very similar experience when it comes to the software side of things and very very similar when it comes to the performance as well. Unfortunately I can't do a side-by-side -side benchmark and test because I can't actually get Geekbench installed on the Honor 20 Pro because it is pre-launch. Uh, they've actually blocked it uh, from installing so that's a bit of a shame. But they both rock the Huawei Kirin 980 chipset, the most powerful Huawei Kirin platform that you can grab right now with either 6 or 8 gigs of RAM stuffed inside as well. So basically as you'd expect your apps basically start up straight away as soon as you tap uh, the icons you've got obviously the behind the scenes shenanigans running to make sure that your apps are prioritized if you use them more often than others uh, any other background apps that you tend not to use are cold in order to save on memory and yes of course you can split screen with either of these handsets absolutely no problem whatsoever and the performance remains really really good so it's great if you want to watch a bit of video action so you can have a video streaming up at the top there and then just basically browse your messages uh, respond to emails do whatever you want in the bottom half and it all works absolutely perfectly and well Neither of these smartphones rock a dedicated gaming mode. You do, of course, get a nice bit of GPU turbo action for the likes of PUBG Mobile and several of the other most popular titles out there. And there, you know, the good news is you can play them on those sort of top detail levels. And so as you can see there, I've got this one set to HD and a nice bit of high frame rate action. The graphics are fantastic and it runs an absolute dream. Nice consistent frame rate throughout. The only time I've e ever seen either of these two chug is if you're absolutely bombing it across the landscape on a bike or a car and jerking about all over the place, then it might occasionally stumble underneath that 30 FPS setting, but otherwise absolutely spot on. And there's basically bugger all difference between them when it comes to the battery tech as well. The Honor 20 Pro and the Honor View 20 both packing a mighty 4,000 milliamp battery. And of course, because of the general uh, energy efficiency of that Kirin 980 chipset and the Magic UI software as well, that means you won't struggle to have some juice left by the time you hit bed, even if you're constantly loading up the camera, uh, messaging people, streaming media, things like that. It's only really if you're gonna be blasting through PUBG Mobile for hours and hours that you'll probably kill it within a single day. And as you can see here, you've got the usual performance mode, power saving mode, ultra power saving mode, and all that behind the scenes um, app optimization 
on the go as well. And when it is finally time to power back up again, both of these handsets support Honor's supercharged tech. That's 22.5 watts. Um, so not the nippiest round, but certainly pretty effective all the same. And last up, before we hit the camera tech, we'll dive into the storage. And you probably will be shocked to hear that, again, there's bugger all difference. You can pick up both of these handsets in either 128 gigs or 250 gig flavors. So plenty of storage space for all of your media and apps. So what actually is the major difference between the Honor 20 Pro and the Honor View 20? Well, it is, of course, the rear camera tech. Here on the Honor View 20, it was quite a simple setup. 48 megapixel primary lens, f1.6. Now you do have a time of flight lens in there as well, just for accurate distance judging used for a few little AR apps and games, things like that. Of course, that's been massively upgraded here on the Honor 20 Pro. So you get a 48 megapixel primary lens again, but this time it's an f1.4 aperture, very wide aperture for a smartphone. And it is sporting Sony's IMX586 sensor as well, which is the same sensor used in the likes of the OnePlus 7 Pro. Uh, it's definitely clever stuff. That is backed by a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and an 8 megapixel telephoto lens, which can shoot up to three times optical zoom images. And as if that wasn't enough, you also get a fourth lens stuffed here on the Honor 20 Pro as well. It's a two megapixel macro lens, which can basically take really up close shots. Uh, no issue, keep them nice and crisp. If you actually jump on into the camera app, there's not a huge amount of difference in terms of the general sort of setup. The major difference is, of course, the fact that you can swap between those lenses here on the Honor 20 Pro, whereas you don't get an option to do that here on the Honor View 20. So if you tap here, for instance, you can go up to two times digital zoom. That's basically your lot. But here on the Honor 20 Pro, you can jump into that wide angle lens with a quick tap. Uh, you can go up to that three times optical zoom using the telephoto lens. You can even jump up to five times because both of these phones have the AI mode. You can quickly enable it or disable it with just a quick tab of this little toggle up here, which is really, really helpful. And uh, with it activated, it basically just flips between the various uh, settings to suit the particular mode. So if it detects it's a low light situation, it might swap to the night mode, for instance, which is a long exposure mode. Uh, you can control the shutter speed and the ISO levels, but in standard auto mode, it does a great job, produces a nice, well-balanced, well-lit shot. And of course, you've got the portrait mode if you're trying to shoot a human subject as well, complete with full control over the actual uh, depth effect. On top of that, you've got a whole bunch of other bonus modes as well. So for instance, you've got full pro controls on both of these devices, which just as you can see, allows you to play around with, again, the shutter speed, the ISO levels, all that kind of shenanigans to get a very precise kind of shot. You've got various video modes and everything as well. And if you actually just slap it in the standard video mode, you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage with either of these handsets. Because you can only shoot it at 30 frames per second, you can't shoot it at 60 FPS. That's uh, definitely a 1080p only effort. And so far, I really, really like the Honor 20 Pro uh, for its camera shop as well. The View 20 was perfectly fine as well, you know, produce nice everyday images and uh, some decent looking home movies as well. But the Honor 20 Pro certainly seems to be a little step up in terms of just the general image quality, helped along no doubt in large part by that Sony IMX sensor, of course. And if we jump on into the selfie cams, it's a 25 megapixel here on the older Honor View 20 that's been upgraded to a 32 megapixel here on the Honor 20 Pro, but there's really no difference between them, to be perfectly honest. You once again have the AI smarts, of course. Uh, it's fully HDR loaded no matter which one you choose. Uh, and as you see you've got the likes of the portrait modes that you can uh, switch to follows your face around make sure you stay nice and crisp blurs out the background again with a choice of various effects uh, or of course you can just stick it in standard photo mode and you can shoot up to 1080p uh, video with those selfie cams as well. So there you have it, that in a nutshell is the Honor 20 Pro, fresh and new versus the older Honor View 20, which is of course coming down in price now that the Honor 20 Pro is uh, it's officially a thing at the time that this video goes live at least, because it's still pre-launch as I'm shooting this. But as you can see, very little difference in terms of the software, the performance, battery life, all that kind of shenanigans. It's really that camera tech is the main jump up. Uh, and of course, a few little uh, funny bits like the edge mounted fingerprint sensor as well. So are you tempted by either of these handsets? Maybe the View 20's new cheaper price has got you uh, slightly swayed or maybe you really want that flexible camera tech here on the Honor 20 Pro. Well, definitely bash your comments down below. It'd be great to hear your thoughts. And please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers, everyone. Love you.